You're listening to Songs Out Loud from St. Louis, Missouri. I'm Aaron Dorr. Rusty Motor City pissed in Who promote the hardest Couldn't watch, couldn't listen Read a lot of bottom But I couldn't tell the difference Between dark and evil Is how hard it is to see you Both the verse beetle And rise to upheaval Completely depend on corrupt people Forgot who's in charge Google searching for God Now you're talking Throw it out Break it back Break it down Toss it up Pick it out Lay it back Turn it down On Halloween weekend 2022, a small group of us gathered in a lounge above the Royale Food and Spirits to hear Stan Chisholm deconstruct his single, Smitten. Later that night, Stan would play an all-vinyl DJ set. To help set the scene, you might picture Stan sitting on a black leather couch wearing the Bjork swan dress from her Academy Awards appearance in 2001 back in her Vespertine days because that's what he was wearing. Hey, what's up? Uh, Stan, 18 and counting, South City native, still here. Trying to break myself every chance I get, you know? Stan Chisholm, AKA 18 and counting, is an experimental DJ and MC. He's also a graphic artist and muralist with a bachelor's in fine arts from the Art Institute of Chicago. I'm a grimy art kid. He's a co-founder of open concept arts venue Blank Space on Cherokee Street and a board member of the new music circle Arts Collective. He's won numerous academic scholarships and music awards and holds DJ residences at places like the City Museum, the Royale, and Spark. He occasionally performs and records under the name The Only Ensemble, notably at LuFest 2017. Mid-pandemic, he landed a track on fellow artist Nathan Cook's Afrofuturist compilation entitled Afrofuturism St. Louis. And last summer, his album Some Sort of Future cemented 18 and Counting as a lyricist and MC in the most complete way to date. For this episode, Stan provided 61 individual instrument and vocal tracks and 26 aux buses actually and a track laying around from 2015 that would eventually become verse one. Songs Out Loud breaks it down, instrument by instrument, lyric by lyric, and beat by beat. So the way it goes, in 2015, I was like, like I am still now, but in a different way, I was really hard on myself about um, not putting out enough material specifically as a rapper. So I just need to wrap my ass off over a beat that I found on SoundCloud. Uh, maybe a German producer. So here's just a bit of that beat he found. Like we, like very short exchange. I was just like, hey, I dig this track. Um, can I rap over it and put it on the internet? I got the okay. So I wrote. I heard you never heard of me. Only on the deepest cuts. I see it all in surgery. And so that verse over this beat kind of lived on SoundCloud and nowhere else. And um, fast forward seven years. Yeah, like, you know, I made the beat for Smitten. It was getting pretty close to the the drop date. And um, I hadn't committed any lyrics to it yet. So he dug up that verse from 2015. I knew it was just a fire verse that a lot of people hadn't heard because it's just floating around on SoundCloud. And wrapped it over the brand new beat. And put it on Smitten just so I could hear what lyrics would sound like on it. Let's do a little back and forth between the first version and the new one, starting with the first version. Solo scene taking care of it. Stare at fan faces while I carry every chariot. Solo scene taking care of it. Stare at fan faces while I carry every chariot. For real, why lie? I swear to God, I'll turn this club into a church. That church to a parade. Dedicated, getting paid for everything I make. Why lie? I swear to God, I'll turn this club into a church. That church to a parade. Dedicated, getting paid for everything I make. Everything I make, fully offended. Don't call it work if you a slave. Can't comprehend 18, then started to. Can't comprehend 18, then started to. To me, it sounded slow. 
because the beat I wrote it to is at a faster tempo. It sounded forced. But a lot of times, that's just kind of how lyrics sound when you're rapping something for the first or second time. So I'll roll around listening for a month, hating it, and that's what makes me like want to deliver it better. So, do you set aside time to write like either uh, verses and lyrics, or um, experiment with your machines, or break your machines? Like, is this like a routinized thing that you do, or is it just when the moment hits you when you have a minute here and there? It often feels rebellious. You know, it, it's like yeah, it often feels like. I've been doing this all day and I should be doing that, but I'm going to go do this instead because that's what I need today. You know, um, or it's like second verse of Smitten. I wrote that in line while waiting to get a tooth extracted at a clinic down at Chaffetz. Verse two without the music just sounds like this. When they was like, bro, was prolific, 18, 18 years deep. No misses. Dominate the district. The critics was so vicious. Hardly ever been here. I'm gone. Blow kisses. Man of many missions. Just me and my cold mistress. Hardly trust the bitch, but she know how to hold interest. Creeping on the come up. I know we deserve riches. Not that optimistic, but no one with gold difference. Tell me what you say when it ain't shit to say. When it's game over, no rules to obey. Can you really? You know, no, it's like it's not me making up every single word right there on the spot. It's like I've got, like I said, I write all the time and I find the pieces. And but I composed it in that line in fucking 100 degree weather at seven in the morning. If you, you know? come up with something later tonight, um, maybe while you're DJing or maybe while you're in line to use the bathroom, where would you put that? Would you like frantically write it on a napkin or do you have the space in your phone that's organized or would it be somewhat disorganized because it's in the moment you got to get down? If I'm doing what I'm most comfortable with, I'm pulling a composition notebook out of my backpack. Do if, you have one with you? Um, no, I've got my sketchbook with me, but I, I might write things in there. Okay. Um, if I'm trying to be convenient to the world and I'm really disciplined, I've got a small notebook in my pocket. Um, lately, it just goes in the phone. I got so many notebooks full. I mean, that's helpful because sometimes I'll forget something. I'll say, oh, yeah, there was this one time I said Falcon about something. I'm typing in, I find whatever the hell I was saying about Falcon. Um, so, yeah, I don't, I'm like, yeah, and that's exactly it. There's times where I just forget and I hate it, but I can't like say anything to anybody about it because I'm going to ruin the party, you know? So it's, I'm always trying to catch those things so I can come back to it later and um, hopefully make something that's mesmerizing. And then I just, sometimes I'm just lazy and I'm like, I don't want to put, I don't feel like writing words. This is a good enough song. And I love instrumental music, so whatever, let it ride. My bandmate, Brennan England, um, who's in the only ensemble, he was like, yeah, that sounds great. I heard you never heard of me. Only on the deepest cuts, I see it all the surgery. So that's just kind of like bragging about, like, yeah, I got deep cuts. I've got a lot of songs that are tight that if you know it, you know it, you know? Like, I started DJing just to get in the way of people. It was like strictly a chess move. And I love music, but it was kind of a chess move. It's like I wanted to be in places so I can throw shows. Why lie? I swear to God, I'll turn this club into a church, that church to a parade. It's like, how do you change the attitude of a space, physically or emotionally? Um, you know, as a visual artist, as an installation based artist, as I got more into that, I um, just wanted to do more of it. And, you know, like, there's a lot of comparisons between letting go and being in the club and doing things that you normally wouldn't and being in church and feeling things that you normally wouldn't and being at a parade and just being mesmerized by the crowds and just you know just we see so much especially with like in in our festival era we see so many artists that we respect because we see them in front of thousands of people that you just don't get a sometimes i feel like we just don't get a, a, a realistic view of what it's like to be dedicated to your craft and making art for people. Dedicated, getting paid for everything I make. Fully offended, don't call it work if you were slave. Can't comprehend 18, then start at two. This ain't a head do, my nigga, it just grew. It just grew. <laughs> when people ask me how I get my hair this way, it's like, I sleep and I wake up. <laughs> and it's like, 
I'm a grimy art kid. This is just what my hair does. You know, it's like it's that simple. This ain't a head do. My nigga, it just grew. I had I think I have a really serious demeanor, but I've I've got some comedian in me, you know, and I think that was kind of one of my moments. Like, but you can't like go into hokey voice on the on the track, you know, you gotta give people some room, you know. Okay, so this next part you might call the directives. There's sixteen phrases and it's like light it up, throw it out, bring it back, break it down. Sixteen total, then it repeats again. How do you like? Do you have like an acronym that you memorize, like right, the so order look, of all I'll, this? I'll tell you exactly how this went down. First, so the first went, I have a list of verbs, a list of directions, and the word it right down the middle, and I just went through and paired them. And I chose familiar verbs that we've all heard before and are really open ended. Light it up, throw it out, bring it back, break it down, toss it up, bend it out, lay it back, tear it down. Light it up could mean we're having a hell of a party. It could mean we're smoking a joint. You know, break it down could mean we're stealing the tires off of your car. It could mean I'm dancing better than you, you know? So it, it's like I, I wanted it to be. Um, Relatable. It's, you said you want it to be relatable, and I can see that with lyrics, and people kind of get drawn to that. Um, I don't think there's a single danceable song on this album, though. <laughs> like, how relatable is this album? For the I mean, you got to be there live. You got to see it. Wretched goes the fuck off. It's really like, it's really fun to me. Like, We're listening to a track he included called Pulsar 2-30 Minutes. And it's basically a 30 minute long drum machine jam session. So Smitten is just like me testing out this new drum machine that I got. That's like my dream piece. A year ago, I thought I would never have that thing. It's a, um, it's a Pulsar 23 made by Soma Laboratories. It's a Russian company, and they make really experimental instruments. Like their ethos is it all has to be played by human, which isn't necessarily the case with this one, but most of them, you have to somehow interact with it. There's some interesting way that you can interact with it by like physical touch. I think every song I make starts off as like a 15 to 40 minute jam session. And uh, I've moved into modular synths and that's just like kind of the nature of that style of production. Um, it takes time to figure out what, what's good. It's a, it's, a, it's a wrestling match. You don't want to sound whack and you don't want to leave the, 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 the battle until like you've at least gotten some good hits in on it. What I try to do is um, get all of the options. I might, it might be that I only take 30 seconds of the whole thing. I mean, I'm multi-track recording this, so a lot of times I know that yeah, that snare is just there in the background. It's annoying. It doesn't have to always be there. So it take it, it just takes time to do that. While I'm walking, I might get up and go to the other side of the room, and I'm working with things. Um, but like, if it doesn't feel good to me to listen to for 20 minutes, I don't expect anyone to want to listen to it for two. And that's what's fun to me, you know. And if, and I've learned, and I know that like I can't put out. I could. And I will put out 20 minute songs, but like, that's not what this album was about. This was like, look, y'all, I can make an album and it's going to sound dope. At some point you have a 30 minute track in front of you. When you go back to that like two minute mark where something badass happens, 
you're listening to that badass part and you're knowing what you did necessarily or maybe sometimes Most, you're kind of lost so, sometimes i know what's going on i mean well it often, seems like it would be often, easy often, to get lost. Like often often i know what's going on but as i listen it's like those times where i listen back to the album and i'm like i have no clue what's making right. that sound but most of the time i do because i remember these these instances like in particular on this jam probably somewhere in like the two or three minute mark i flipped on this um this dod rackable delay module that i got at the uh thrift store around the corner from me and when that came on i'm like that's 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 the goal right there there's like a certain moment where things just get more and I know what's doing it, <laughs> but it's just like more of that and more delays. Delays on every hi-hat, delays on every, always, just because it's supposed to sound kind of janky. It's supposed to sound like something's about to fall off of your car, you know? And you think most people can relate to that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, well, really, I don't know. I don't know if it's like what most people can relate to, but I often uh, tell people that I want things to sound like St. Louis feels. And that doesn't mean I'm talking about our current politics. It doesn't mean I'm talking about um, the new businesses that are showing up in the neighborhoods. Like I want it to be a textual thing that sounds like it feels to drive down the street, to look at the best or worst architecture. Um, and then it all becomes like, how can I celebrate around that moment? How can I celebrate how good that little piece feels there's a sound that happens a couple of times in the track, and it's definitely in this session towards the end where it starts doing this sort of It's really like clunky type of sound. Um, that's a different drum machine. So it's not just the Pulsar that's running. I'm running other machines at the same time. So I'm like MIDI syncing all these things. So I might have a signal that's like, oh, that's just making the pulsar hit the snare, but it might also be hitting a low time on a completely different machine. And in this case, the Roland R8. It's a late 80s, early 90s um, drum machine that, that was Roland's take on trying to have like a human feel to the drum. So it's got like a weird, like not quite perfect, not perfectly quantized kind of feel to it. Um, sounds a lot like some 808s. There's some like um, Lindrum sounds, very familiar. The Roland 808 kit came out in the early 80s and allowed its users to program their own beats as opposed to using presets. The sound became iconic, and there's a bunch of really famous beats made with the sound of that machine. Here's one. It sounds familiar. We've heard the hell out of it. However, there is a external box by this company called like circuit it's like it's just called like circuitbending.co or something that um has a data cable that you attach to the back of it and on the ra that allows you to circuit bend it externally normally when you're circuit bending something you break open the machine and you're resoldering it and you're kind of breaking its signal path and how it communicates so you're like rerouting its brain to sound alien and wrong If I would have just opened up Logic and start using stock sounds or even like the best sound bank that I can find online, like that shit's too easy. It's already there. And it doesn't come that way. You may, yeah. And like, and it's, it's like I made the decision and I kept it. I didn't just do it. And it's just like, I feel amazing. I give myself miles and miles and miles of decisions to make. And I think that's what feels good. That's what feels like real life. That's, you know what I mean? We, we, we sift through the day and we, we remember what we can and we return to that. And that's just kind of how I like to make music. When I'm like, I'm making a rap ass rap song, I'm like, I'm, it's a switch that I hit. It's not just natural. I get it, I avoid it. I'm like, I try to repel against it. That's what experimental is. 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 And now, Smitten by 18 and Counting. Send it 
down, light it up, slow it up, pop it fast, break it down, toss it up, bend it out, make it fast, turn it down, break it up, slow it out, take it fast, make it down, swing it up, break it out, make it fast, take it down, light it up. I heard you never heard of me, only on the deepest cuts, I see it all in surgery. Solo scene taking care of it. Stare at fan faces while I carry every cherry. Yeah, for real. Why lie? I swear to God, I'll turn this club into a church. Then church to a parade. Dedicated, getting paid for everything I make. Fully offended. Don't call it work if you a slave. Can't comprehend 18, then started two. This ain't a head do. My nigga, it just grew. The city you wanna see, slightly out of reach. Progressively prestige and everything underneath. Underwhelmed by the funk, make your own scent then. Something for y'all to chew on every damn sentence. Red and blue special effects until they get caught scared. Hands red, pants pissed in. Three yards of field, that's a castle that I live in. Grip the color of a rusty motor city pissed in. Who promote the hardest, couldn't watch, couldn't listen. Read a lot of bottom, but I couldn't tell the difference. Between dark and evil is how hard it is to see you. Both the verse beetle arise the upheaval. Completely depend on corrupt people. Forgot who's in charge. Google searching for God. Light it up, throw it out, break it back, break it down, toss it up, bend it out, lay it back, tear it down, break it up, pull it out, take it back, wet it down, speed it up, wear it out, give it back, send it down, light it up, throw it out, break it back, break it down, toss it up, bend it out, lay it back, tear it down, break it up, pull it out, take it back, wet it down, speed it up, bring it out, give it back. Bro was prolific, 18, 18 years deep, no misses, dominate the district, the critics were so vicious, hardly ever been here, I'm gone, blow kisses, man of many missions, just me and my cold mistress, hardly trust the bitch, but she know how to hold interest, creeping on the come up, I know we deserve riches, not that optimistic, but no, I'm a gold difference. Tell me what you say when it ain't shit to say. When it's game over, no rules to obey. Can you relate? Ditch the patience with the situation like Jim Bay. Get it rocking, sitting in the pocket like switchblades. Frenzy music, unclear how we really do it. The people want the purest, show and prove it. Plenty derelicts with merit, don't get embarrassed by sacrifices. But still cherish the same old vices on new devices. Is you rolling? Bitch at light speed, taking back with SARS, playing the perfect heist precisely. Blazing through the back streets, synthesized ebony and ivory, bando bangers and film photography. Get me greedy, I'm guilty on all charges. Green as the whole harvest, signed deals like Phil Jarvis. Cold hearted, but still doing right by the children. What I've been doing all my life is what I do for a living. Smith. Songs Out Loud is produced, edited, and mixed by me, Aaron Dorr. But I got the idea from being inspired by Song Exploder over at Radiotopia, distributed by PRX. Host Rishikesh Hirway utilizes this format with national acts. The artists you hear on Songs Out Loud would love your support if you like what you hear. Follow Stan on Instagram at 18 and Counting to get started. Thanks for joining us. Okay, what? This has been a Songs Out Loud production. And, and I'm so used to this woman's voice. I'm so used to this woman's voice. Like, it's pretty wild. Like, I try to introduce people to her by tape. <laughs> I don't know anything about her. But, like, her voice is just, like, in my dome because of being on all of these tapes that I have as, like, recording ammunition. Now I've got more fresh blank tapes. I don't have to do that. But it is still fun to kind of just, like, flip through them or just put it on and listen to what's going on.